Hi guys, today the camera we're looking at it is the Xacta BX2B. Some early models were um, spelled EXACTA instead of EXKTA. They were just a limited release and that meant which countries they went to. This one has a 50mm f2 lens. It cost me $54. When these were new, they were over $250. Not a cheap camera uh, for the years they were made. The value on eBay with the lens is about $200. This one's in very good condition. The personal significance of this camera, at least to me, is I think this is the prettiest camera ever made. These things are just absolutely beautiful. They're German made, they're a work of art. These were made from 1963 to 1967. The, uh, this particular model, the BX2B, is the seventh version of Xactas. They sold 114,000 of these. And the 1936 model, the original Xacta, was, goes on record as being the first single lens reflex ever made. These were featured in the Alfred Hitchcock movie Rear Window with a telephoto lens if you want to find one in a movie someplace. They're, my, they're made by Ihaji in Dresden, East Germany. And they, this particular one was made when it was occupied by Russia, which is, we'll show you when we get to the top of it. It's kind of interesting. They're left-handed, and it has a built-in film cutter for extracting a film mid-roll mid in case you want to swap to black and white and color and you don't want to waste the rest of your film. There's two canisters inside, one for feed and one for take-up, and it's not only left-handed, but it's also backwards in the way it transports the film in the opposite direction of most single-lens reflexes. This is a Carl Zeiss Jenna lens. Uh, they were interchangeable lenses, interchangeable viewfinders, interchangeable focusing screens, and it had a detachable back. On the front, there's uh, three sinks for, for flash. Um, the one on the left is um, an X sink, and the lower one on the right side is for flash bulbs. And the upper one on the right side is also for flash bulbs. So there was a distinction between using a fast shutter speed on flash bulbs, which would be burning in mid cycle of their burn, and ones that would use the whole flash. So those are those two different things. And there's a long explanation of explanation of it in the manual on what shutter speeds to use. This is the shutter release button up here. It's coupled through the lens down to the camera, which is kind of interesting. So this is the um, aperture ring from f22 to f2 in this case. And this is how you focus. And this little lever on the side, which is kind of hard to see, you push in to release the lens. It's a lever as, as opposed to a button, and that takes the whole lens out, like so. See that lever? And then when you put it back in, it snaps in. On the camera top, Here's a frame counter, and you manually reset it with this little dial here. It doesn't reset when you open and close the back. So you could dial that around to zero. I'm going the long way, I guess. Okay, I have it set for a 500th of a second. You cock the shutter like that. And it spins that dial. To change the shutter speed, you pull up on this dial, and you turn it to where you want. Here's a 250th of a second. And like a lot of the old German cameras, whenever you take a picture, the view through the viewfinder is blacked out until you cock the shutter again. So now you would be able to see through the viewfinder. This is the uh, release button to rewind the film. And uh, you'll notice that's on the left side instead of the right side. That's because things go the other way on this camera because it's basically left-handed. Now that's the faster shutter speeds. The so slower shutter speeds are over on this side and also the self-timer 
delay is on this side and they're both in the same button. So to set a slower shutter speed, like for instance uh, a six second shutter speed, you first have to cock the camera, which I already did. Then you have to turn this knob and it's like a spring. You crank it up till it stops. Then you lift this ring and you turn it to select the shutter speed that you want. In this case, that's set for six seconds. There's a little dot over there by the six. Now if I press the, now I have to turn this over to the B setting. It has to be either in bulb or T for this to work. Now when I press the shutter release, it'll spin this timer down for six seconds. And after it takes the picture, the thing still isn't completely wound down. Now I'll set it to um, B for bulb again. It's already cocked. So it opens the shutter and then closes it when I release. And of course, T would do the opposite. T would open the shutter and then it wouldn't close it until I press it again. Now let's go back to a normal setting. I won't demonstrate the self-timer because it might jam up on me, but the way you do the self-timer is again you use the B setting, but over here on the right you use the red numbers instead of the black numbers. Now the little numbers are fractions of a second, like a half a second and a fourth of a second, and the, and the larger red numbers and the larger black numbers are full seconds, two seconds, four seconds, six seconds. So to do a self-timer you'd select it on the red for say four seconds, hit the shutter in T or B mode, either one, and then run to your destination. Neat little camera. Okay, here's the viewfinder. You just press this button in the back to pop it up, and then it opens up. And of course, again, you have to have the shutter cocked before you be able to see out the viewfinder, otherwise it's all black. You can raise the magnifying glass with this little lever on the side, it kind of twists in an arc. So then you can look down there and see a magnified view. And also there's a sport finder in the front. Then you can see for the view of your 50 millimeter lens, kind of handy for actually if you were taking actual sport shots. So to fold it up, you have to rotate this back down again and then fold these up and click them shut. And of course this whole mechanism can be removed and you could replace it with a pentaprism head. The Russians, of course, insisted uh, when they occupied Germany that these cam cameras were all labeled with USSR. And of course, German engineering didn't really want to do that, so they put this sort of crappy Germany USSR label on the top that probably could easily be rubbed off if you didn't like the fact that they were occupied by the Soviet Union. On the camera back, we have the take-up spool on the left. To open this, you have to pull this release knob on the bottom. And you can pull it and twist it so that it stays open better. And again, this is the take-up spool on this side, and this is the this would be you insert your film canister on the right side and as you advance the film it cocks the focal plane shutter and advances the film into the take up spool this would be the rewind knob over here and it would wind the, the film back in there's a little lever here someplace you would crank it back in that way. And the back is removable. There's a pin here that you can pull out to remove the back. They had some optional backs. And this is the film cutter. And you have to turn this out. Now normally you would do this with the shutter with the back closed, but I'll just demonstrate this. And then you would pull this back. And there's a little knife 
right there. You probably can't see it on the camera, but I'll make a close-up image of it. And that's how you can cut the film, and then you screw it back in to, so that it doesn't fall out. Well, it can't really fall out. Here's a close-up view of the knife used for cutting the film so you can change film mid-roll. Then to close it, you could just rotate this until it snaps back in again. On the camera bottom, we have the rewind knob. And of course to do that, you'd have to push this release knob up here to rewind it. And again, the film is in the opposite direction. This knob is just used to open the back. And of course, this is the tripod socket. So that's about it. It's a real pretty camera and like I say, I think personally that it's the most beautiful camera ever made. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.